في في هذه الجلسة. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back on stage Familusi A. Babajide and his panel. There is a prophecy that two sons of Adam and two daughters of Eve will appear to defeat the White Witch. All my life, I seem to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. There's no curse on this family. There is on the men in this family. to the penguin next to you and give him a great big hug. What you hugging me for? He told me to get away. Now you like it. Woo! Just close your eyes. You'll keep your mind wide open. All right. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another fantastically key session um, on Multiple Realities 247 as it relates to uh, noble thinking and social intelligence. Uh, it is indeed an honor to be here, and my name is Fami Lucia Kimbabajide. You may call me Feb, and uh, I am a global citizen from Africa and from the nation of Nigeria. Most who were here yesterday know um, our very good neighbors, um, like I said, Wakanda. Um, I'd like to welcome our distinguished uh, panelists, and of course, you are amazing audience. Please do give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> you deserve it. <laughs> All right, amazing. Uh, moving between realities is a part of everyday life for um, young people, and the question to ask is how to make sure you benefit from it and use it to enhance um, creativity without uh, getting lost in the virtual reality. So Ian, um, as a part of the offering of the Science uh, Museum in London, you have uh, an IMAX theater with a giant screen the size and the height of four double-decker buses. I also read about the 360-degree um, virtual reality tour of space at the museum. Um, so what would you say are the real benefits of this experience? Well, I think before I answer any questions, I might make one condition, which is given my fellow panelist, I think I need to be in a Hollywood movie. I think it's the thing that's missing in my life. But to answer your question, um, we do a lot of uh, work with new technology for a simple reason, which is that one of our biggest audiences is families. And very often, when they experience new technologies, very often it's in a science museum that they first encounter it. They may not have experienced it in school, or even if the children have. Very often, parents are naturally anxious. They're both excited because they want to keep up to date with their children. And one of the really key things we try and achieve is for 
families as a group to experience VR and other immersive experiences. So it can build up an understanding and trust. And you're right, we've done a, a whole variety of experiences. Um, one of my favorite examples um, was a few years ago, we did an incredible project with a wonderful orchestra called the Philharmonia. Um, and it so happens the conductor is an amazing man called Esopekas Salonen. He's one of the greatest musicians in the world, but he is so digitally tuned in. And we had this extraordinary surround digital experience where you could conduct an entire symphony orchestra. Uh, the only problem was it was so popular we had to eventually drag people out of it. Um, but I think the key thing for museums in the digital age is a really old-fashioned concept, and that's trust that actually very often when you talk to people in my country, throughout Europe, maybe even in, in, in Saudi Arabia, people are not for or against any technology. They just want to understand what it is. Amazing. Now I'll come to you, Carrie. Um, over the years, you've proved yourself a leader, innovator, and pioneer um, in the entertainment industry with over 57 films and $5.8 billion in box office revenue. That's amazing. Now, your track record also includes um, creating new business models in 3D cinema, global film production, and education. And now, still not satisfied with um, your disruptive clout, um, you head immersive artistry today. Why immersive artistry? First of all, thank you. Um, and I really want to thank all of the organizers uh, of MISC. This conference rocks. This is an <laughs> awesome conference. And I am extremely honored to be here, to have been invited to be on this panel with the two of you. Um, I would say not since July 4th, 1776 in the United States have I seen a country go through such incredible transformation that's being led in Saudi Arabia that's so impressive, so impressive what the Crown Prince and people like Bader and the ministers are doing, so thank you. Um, immersive artistry, is built as a next step, a next evolution of media. And it recognizes, like in Saudi Arabia, which has such a vast young demographic, and there's young demographics around the world today, people who are seeking more. They are way, way, way more advanced technologically. They want a different relationship with content. And what we try and focus on is, how do we build a new relationship with two words, emotion and intimacy? We want people to have an emotional relationship with their content. It makes it more relevant to them, then they want to stay with it. And intimacy means you can go where you want to go. So immersive artistry is the next evolution. You don't just watch the movie. You don't just watch the experience passively. We are actively transporting people into environments into locations and into storylines. No glasses, no VR, no AR. We are building the first ever real worlds to send people into for three hours to 10 hours where you're interacting with everything from holographic technologies to robots to all projection mapping, all wrapped in incredible mythology. Amazing. Emotion and intimacy. Ian, um, would you say there are disadvantages disadvantages to creating and immersing young people in multiple realities? And if yes, uh, would you say the benefits far outweigh uh, the disadvantages or vice versa? Wow, that's a complicated question. But uh, let me, I think there are several parts to it. The first is that if you think of um, certain panics that have taken place already about existing technology. So, you know, one, one panic is that video games make people violent. The other is that immersive technologies and video games can uh, create problems for people with attention deficit disorder and sleep patterns. And the thing about this, and I've been talking to scientists about this quite a lot, is that, guess what, there is in fact no clear answer. So uh, a lot of people have very strong opinions and very often parents say to me, we worry about this. And I say to them, look, just trust your parental instinct. Don't wait for the science because it hasn't really emerged yet. Uh, the other thing I did want to mention, though, about um, risks and benefits is a big, big issue, which I think is particularly relevant to the skills debate and this audience here. With all these great technologies, particularly in the digital sphere, we cannot continue a situation where they're all designed by men, okay? 
Um, and one of the great things that's really inspiring about this event is that when you look at Silicon Valley and a lot of those major organizations, uh, no more than 20% of the people working in those industries are women. But actually, what, wouldn't it be just amazing if Saudi Arabia shocked the world, given I've met so many great women here who are in, the, in that area. Um, the other thing, though, about uh, benefits is the point about new technology is that it happens in surprising ways. Let me give a really radical example. I was talking to my team about, there's a VR experience that college kids can use, and it teaches them about bullying. And what's amazing is that very often when people are bullying other people, they have no idea 